What's up, guys? We're gonna play Nelson. We're gonna play the Nelson bot. All right, people are coming. What's going on? It's gonna be too easy. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. All right, so here's how this is gonna work. Instead of me only giving you guys good moves as the option, I'm gonna throw in some mistakes, okay? And we're gonna see if you guys can navigate and avoid the bad moves, all right? So, let's go ahead and get started with the poll. And like I said, not all of these moves are gonna be good. So choose wisely, okay? Your options are F5, E5, D5, and C5. Ready, go. How's the flood incident? Good question. So we basically got it taken care of. We had to replace all the floors, uh, the hardwood floor we had to pull up, replace all that. There was carpet that got ruined. We had to pull that up, replace it. Uh, actually did it. My dad came to help and we did it together. And so we avoided the insurance claim, but we uh, we did a good job. And so, yeah, it looks good. Thanks for asking. All right, poll is out there and we have 58% saying E5. All right, E5 it is. Let's see what Nelson's going to do. Yeah, you can suggest moves, um, but I may or may not pick them, and I am going to pick some some bad ones from time to time. So, uh, options are going to be G6, attack the queen, chase it away from the F7 pawn. Knight to F6, attacking the queen. Bishop C5, going on the offensive, or knight to C6. All right, here we go. Pole is incoming, guys. G6, knight F6. Bishop c5, or knight to c6, and vote. You guys really trust people in the comments telling you what the best move is? That's the question. Do you really trust them? Be careful who you listen to. That's all I'm going to say. Be careful who you listen to. All right. Seems like you guys have seen this trick before. And let me see what the percentages is. We got 17% saying G6. So see, this is what I thought was going to happen. 18%. Yeah, it's, it, we're attacking the queen, right? Like, let's get that queen out of there. We don't want to mess around with the queen. All right, so the vote is knight c6. Real quickly, uh, for those of you who did say g6, this is a common mistake, and you leave the e5 pawn undefended and you open yourself up to a fork, and after you block the check, you actually lose your rook in the corner, okay? So don't play g6. That was a trick question. All right, knight c6 is the best move. 58% of you said that. Knight to f6 is a gambit you will still lose your pawn but you develop quickly and it's actually a playable gambit um but we're gonna go with knight c6 good job guys all right bishop to b5 look at nelson so option number one we attack the bishop with the pawn um option number two we actually let me you guys give me some options this is going to be one and then i'm going to say knight to d4 is another one and then what else Throw out some moves there. Now pawn to g6. Somebody says, okay. And somebody says d6. All right. g6, d6, king e7. <laughs> d6, knight f6. Okay. Um, let's go for these four moves. g6, knight f6, knight d4, and a6. So I chose some that you guys have suggested. All right. Let me do the poll. So we've got g6 again. Knight to f6, knight to d4, going on the offensive, and a6. And there you go. All 
All right, what do we have here? Okay, top moves coming in at knight to f6, all right. G6 is the second choice, and then some people said knight to d4. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. So I think you guys are spot on with attacking the queen now. Now that we've dealt with this threat, we can immediately go ahead and attack the queen. And I think both of these are okay. Personally, I like what you guys voted with knight to f6. I think that's what I would play. We're not worried about this, right? Because we're making a bigger threat on the queen. If Nelson takes this, we're gonna take the queen. We don't care. Knight to d4 looks like, okay, we're going for some aggressive things, but what happens after queen takes check? It's a fork, right? Now we can save our knight by going back, but we still lost the pawn, and I don't think that's probably the best move. Same thing with a6, then we allow the trade, and we're gonna lose our e-pawn, right? So I definitely think these are the best two moves. All right, so you guys voted knight to f6. Let's see what Nelson's gonna do. Queen to f5. All right, so no cheating, but you wanna throw out some suggestions. What should we play here? All right, I'm seeing some people saying to move the D pawn. I'm seeing knight to D4 now, okay? And I'm seeing G6 to attack the queen this way. All right, so let's go for G6. Let's go for knight to D4. Let's go for D5. And let's go for queen to E7 to kind of defend some things here, all right? Let me start the poll. G6, D5. Knight to d4, going for the fork, or queen to e7, defending some important pawns. All right. You got g6 attacking the queen. You have knight to d4, forking these guys. You've got d5 going for the center, and you've got queen e7 defending some important pawns. What do you guys like? Somebody says d5 is a blunder. Somebody said d5 is a blunder. Somebody said d6 would block our bishop in. Okay. Bishop to e7, that's not one of the choices. That maybe would have been a good good move, though. Somebody says knight to d4 is a blunder. Okay. Lots of people with some opinions here. It's a toss-up between knight to d4 and d5. Okay. So, it looks like the move is knight to d4 that's winning. And, all right. I think that's enough time. Um... So knight to d4 is what we're going to play, but let's talk about the options here. So knight d4, I believe, falls into exactly what I said before, right? You're still going to lose this pawn, and it's a fork, and you're going to have to go back and retreat. So not the move that I would have chosen. It does look nice when you first look at it, like, ooh, 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 we have three things that we're attacking. But remember, that knight was doing an important job defending the pawn, right? d5, I think, is what I would play with the discovered attack on the queen. And now Nelson has to waste some more time moving his queen probably back. And we get a really valuable move for free. So I definitely think d5 was the best move. Um, and so you have to be careful. You know, you don't always just go for a fork. You wanna make sure that your opponent doesn't have any ways to respond to that fork, right? That's dangerous for you, okay? So uh, the vote was knight to d4. So let's go ahead and play that. And queen e7, uh, I should mention, you know, blocking the bishop, probably not ideal. g6 was okay. I think that's a, you know, one of those middle ground okay moves, but not really awesome. d5 was, was probably the best. Okay. So, uh, Nelson took this. So, what are our options going to be? Well, we only have uh, three legal moves. So, bishop e7, queen e7, and knight to e6. So, I'm going to give you those three options. Bishop e7, queen e7. Or knight to e6. Think carefully. All right, there's the poll. Or resign. Yeah, we could resign. That's another option. I didn't put that in the poll. <laughs> All right. Okay, so most people are seeing knight to e6. Yeah, we, we don't want to block with one of these, right? Because our knight is going to get captured. We lose a knight for no reason. Uh, I guess you could say if you take with the queen, you know, maybe you're thinking of recapturing here, but it's pretty easy for Nelson to just block and we don't have anything. So yeah, knight to e6. You got to go with knight to e6. All right, I'm going to end the poll. Knight to e6 it is. Let's see what Nelson's going to do. 
It's Nelson vs. Nelson. It is kind of Nelson vs. Nelson. All right. So he plays d4. Um, I'm going to give you guys some options here. We can go for the check, being aggressive. So bishop to b4. We can go for knight to g4, forking these pieces. We can play the move c6, attacking the bishop. Or we can... Let me see what you guys are saying. Let's see. Let me find another move that somebody said. Or we can play bishop to d6. All right. I like those options. So here we go. Uh, option one, option two, option three, and option four. Those are your, your choices. Let's get the poll out there. Bishop to b4 with the check. Bishop to d6. Knight to g4. Or on to c6 all right you can now vote okay what's what's happening here lots of people are saying bishop to d6 c6 is second place and then bishop before check and knight to g4 not coming in all right so yes, first of all, bishop to b before check. I don't really like it because Nelson could probably just play c3. And now we have to waste a move moving our bishop. We lost the tempo, kind of slows us down. And it also helps, you know, Nelson support the center. So that's why I don't like here. Knight to g4. Yes, we are attacking the queen. The problem is that the knight's going to be undefended over there, right? And then once he moves the queen, let's just say maybe back here, we got to move our knight again. And it seems like it might also be a wasted move. Okay, so you can see how just threatening something doesn't always mean it's a good thing. Sometimes it's actually a waste of time, right? So the move, what were the other options we had? Uh, Bishop d6 and c6 seem like much better moves to me. c6 I like because we're gaining a tempo. So it's kind of like a, a free move, right? White's gonna have to move the bishop somewhere and then we can continue whatever we wanna do, developing or atta attacking the queen with the pawn, something like that. Bishop d6 also makes sense because we're developing with tempo on the queen. Okay, so I'm fine with, with either of these moves. So, um, oh, and everybody's saying d6. Yeah, d, I should have put that as an option. Well, it's illegal, so we can't play d6. Okay, bishop d6 it is. Let me end the poll. All right, so Nelson just slides the queen over. All right. Option number one, we castle and get the king to safety. Option number two, we play a6 to chase away the bishop. Option number... Let me think. What's the other option I want to give you guys? Let's see. Castles, a6, um, g6 to attack the queen, or maybe knight takes d4 could be a choice. All right, those are your choices. Here we go. Castles. A6, knight takes d4, or g6. All right, ready and go. Wow, 80%. Okay, 80, yeah, 80% saying knight takes d4, 13% castling. And nobody really wants to play a6 or g6. Okay. Um, yes, so you guys are right. I think now is the time to do it because he doesn't have this threat anymore, right? We've dealt with that with the bishop. So now it makes a lot more sense going for this move and we take a pawn, right? So yes, I think you guys are right. Let's talk about castling because normally speaking, this is a great move. In this case, it's pretty risky because of the move e5, right? Whenever you have pieces in the center, where a pawn can attack both of them, you have to be really careful because a lot of times that means you're going to lose a piece. Now, in this case, it's tricky. I don't know if it actually loses a piece because maybe after e5, we take here, he moves the queen, we can slide the rook over, pin the pawn, and we don't actually lose a piece. So that might work, but the safe option is probably knight takes d4. So uh, you guys are fine, but um, yeah, that, that's definitely something that if, it was, if I was playing a real game, I would want to sit there and kind of maybe calculate through that. You might actually be able to trick your opponent if this was a was a good tactical idea. All right, but let's go with knight takes d4. Okay. All right. He plays queen to g5. 
So, um, <clears throat> options for you guys are going to be knight takes e4, taking the free pawn, putting pressure on the queen. Um, another option is going to be rook to g8, defending our pawn here. Another option is going to be knight takes c2. And another option is going to be castling to defend the pawn that way. All right, ready? Here comes the pole. So I'll do castling, rook to g8, knight takes e4, and knight takes c2. Okay. Right, voting has begun. Zero percent on rook g8, one percent. Okay, so a few people said it. Knight takes c2 is definitely wing. All right, so yes, let's let's talk about rook g8. Not probably not the greatest move because we lose castling rights. Then our king is going to be stuck in the center for a while, unless we can figure out a way to castle this way, which doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. So I don't like rook g8. I agree with you guys there. Castling, I think, makes a lot of sense. Getting the king you know, out of the center so that we can use the rook is definitely a move that I will definitely consider. Knight takes e4. Um, probably we might get into trouble after queen takes g7. Maybe we could get away with it and play queen f6 next move, but seems unnecessary. I think castling is a good move, and then knight takes e2 does look like a pretty nice choice going for the rook. Now, we're going to have to be okay with probably losing this, but I think, you know, that'll, that might be okay. So I think you guys are on the right track here. So let's play knight takes c2. Okay. All right. So he goes king to f1. So of course, uh, the obvious choice for us, do we want to take the rook? Do we want to castle and deal with our king safety? Do we want to play c6 and attack the bishop? Or do we want to play queen to e7 to activate the queen this way. Those are your choices. Okay, here's the poll. Let's go castles. Queen to e7. e6. And knight takes a1. I'm guessing we're going to have a, a relatively even choice here, but let's let's see what you guys say. I'm expecting an even Wow. Okay. I was I was expecting more people to say knight takes a1. I really was. But basically what you guys are saying, and I think you're right, is it's stuck. It's not gonna go anywhere. Now, what Nelson could have done instead of going to f1, he could have went over here to d1. And then we would have a tough, tough decision of do we castle or do we take the... Actually, it's not really a tough decision. Then we don't, probably don't want to castle, right? Because the king would just take our knight. We'd have to take the rook. But in this case, um, yeah, I think you guys are... Well, I won't say... I, I don't want to say too much. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go with castles. There's one thing that I'm going to see what happens, but let's go ahead and castle since that's what you guys are voting for. And let me end the poll. And I'm curious what Nelson's going to... Okay, I was, I was hoping he played a different move here. I was hoping that he played e5, and I was curious as to what you guys were going to do about that. Um, but let's continue with the game. Um, there, there is a nice move, I think, that we had here, but uh, we'll, we'll have to save that for another time. Okay. Option. We take the rook, or we deal with the attack on our king with h6 or h5, or we activate the rook, which was kind of one of the points of castling. Yeah, I think that's going to be... Oh, knight takes e4. Okay. Let's say we play h5 to stop the attack. Knight takes e4. Some people are saying rook e8 or knight takes a1. How about those are the options? Okay. h5. Rook to e8. Let's go knight takes e4. And knight takes a1. All right, poll is out. Pretty close this time. It's 
pretty close. So if you haven't voted, now's the time. Your vote counts. Your vote counts. Okay, 48% are saying knight takes e4. Okay, so we're, we're leaning more towards this one. Although rookie eight is a close second, all right? Some people saying h5 and knight takes a1 as well. Okay, first of all, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with taking it now. Um, but this move that I mentioned, I think you want to think through what's going to happen. Because if you just lose a piece, that's not great. And so right now, there's a, like a little idea here on the e1 square. If this pawn pushes, I think you could move your rook over. And if he takes this, you're coming down there with checkmate. So I really like that idea. And so because of that, I'm kind of leaning towards rookie eight, knight takes e4, and not taking that immediately. Because as soon as you take this, Nelson's probably going to play e5. And it looks like we're losing, you know, we're losing a piece there, if I'm not mistaken. So um, keep that in mind. But you guys are voting knight takes e4, which seems like a pretty good move. There might be one trick uh, that Nelson has, but let's see what he's going to do. So we'll go knight takes e4. Oh, he's going for the queen trade. Okay. Um, do I need to do a poll here? Do I, do I really need to do a poll? Should we, should we consider some moves here? I don't know. Let's take the queen. I'm going to, I'm going to do this one for you guys. I'm going to take the queen. I'm going to just go out on the limb and say, you guys have been watching chess vibes long enough to know that you should take the queen. All right. G4. What are we going to do now? Um, take the rook. By the way, let me just show you guys. It would have been interesting if instead of taking our queen, he played like queen here, sort of lining up on our knights. And it would have been interesting to see what we were gonna do, but we don't have to worry about that. So, um, all right, I'm just gonna take like four random moves that I see people saying as the choices for this one. I see someone saying this move. I see someone saying this move. Mm-hmm. Okay, this one, and let's see. Okay, yes, B6. All right, poll incoming. All these moves were suggested by you guys. Okay, we are bouncing back and forth between rook to e8 and knight takes a1. A few people saying b6. So yeah, I do like b6 just from the standpoint of like, hey, you're developing a piece onto a nice diagonal. So I can't really complain about that. But rook to e8 activates the rook, which is very nice. Knight takes a1. I mean, we're going to have to take this rook eventually. So if we take it now or if we wait, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but... The fact that it's still trapped means we could wait a little bit. Although the knights here look scary to me for one reason, this move. I don't know if you guys saw that, but we could end up losing a knight if we're not careful. And so uh, you guys, the suggestion of rookie eight is good because it does defend the knight. So I do like that. So we're going to go with um, rook to e8 and let's see what Nelson's going to do. F4. The, the man is not scared to attack, huh? Look at that. All right. What do we got? What do we have? I'm going to see what you guys are saying. I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to put the moves and let you guys vote. Because I feel like I'm giving it away sometimes. Tonight. So I'm just going to put some moves here. This one. This one. This one. And this one. All right. Poll is incoming. Ninety-six percent. Wow. Okay. Everybody saw it. Well, not everybody, but most people saw it. Okay. The move arrows not visible. Yeah, I wasn't drawing move arrows. I, I just wanted to, to put it over there and see what people said. Okay. Knight to g3 wins by a long shot. Or not by a long... What's the phrase? By a long shot? Not by a long shot? I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, knight g3 wins by a lot. That's what I, what I, what I meant. 
Okay, so you could, good job. You guys saw the fork and this is still here. He hasn't moved the knight to potentially save the rook. By a landslide, yes. <laughs> landslide, thank you. That's the word that was not in my brain. Wins by a landslide. <laughs> okay, so what are we gonna do? I mean, I think these should be options. And then probably B6 and probably infiltrating with the rook. So let's let's start a poll. Okay, here we go. All right, everybody is on board with knight takes h1, and I think you are correct because this is the rook that is potentially gonna, you know, go away the next move. He can move it away, and we don't we won't take it. Also, our knight's being attacked. This is totally fine and not going anywhere. So you guys are exactly right. All right, that was an easy one. He takes it. Okay, now maybe it's a little bit more interesting. Do we take the rook now, or do we wait? Right, so let me give you some options here. We'll go knight takes a1. We'll go b6 again. We will go bishop takes f4, taking the free pawn. Or we will go for rook to e2, infiltrating on the second rank. And so these are your options. Taking it, b6, free pawn, infiltrating on the second rank to potentially checkmate the king. Ready and go. Okay. I'm actually surprised. Um, you guys are listening to me. Okay. I wasn't sure if you were. So yes, Bishop takes F4, the free pawn. As some of you have correctly spotted, it's not a free pawn. So that's a big mistake. Um, and I tricked about 13% of you. Rook to e2. Generally speaking, yes, getting the rook on the second rank is a very good thing to do because you trap the king, you attack pawns. It's just a great spot for the rook. However, look at this. Look at this. In this position, it's a free rook. It's blundering your rook, right? So remember, you always want to start with, am I blundering a piece by playing this move? And if the answer is no, then you think about the other benefits of the move, right? Uh, if it's a blunder, you just you can't play it, right? And so, yeah, the best moves definitely are probably one of these two moves, in my opinion. So I tricked you guys. Be careful. Always look for blunders and mistakes like that. All right. Knight takes a one is winning. So we we're finally saying, you know what? Enough is enough, Nelson. We're taking your knight. Okay. You saw the rook was in danger after you voted. Yep. Yep. All right. All right, what are we going to do? Now that the knight has been moved, infiltrate with rook to e2 on the second rank. Save our knight from the cor from the corner, knight to c2. Play b6 to finally develop the bishop, or play a6 to attack this guy. All right, those are your choices, rook to e2. Oh, sorry, I was about to send it in the chat instead of doing a poll. Rook to e2, knight to c2, b6, and a6. Okay. <laughs> Some people were saying rook to e1 going for a check. Ah, I should have made that a choice. That would have been a good a good test. So yes, what's the problem with this move? The knight, right? It's a blunder. Oh, 7% said rook to e2. Guys, it's still a blunder. It's still a blunder. Bishop's still there, right? Even though the knight moved, there's still the bishop. So that was a trick again. Okay. Knight to c2, 22%, 22% a6. I think both of those are fine moves, but b6. Yeah, I really like b6 too. I really like this diagonal for the bishop. There's a knight there. There's a king there. We want to develop this bishop anyway. So I'm going to go with you guys. 
B6. I agree with that. All right, let's end the poll. <clears throat> Elson goes king to g2. What are we going to play? Do we want to follow through with the plan? Do we want to go here? Or do we want to do something else? I'm just going to give you those two options because I think in this position, it's probably going to be between those two moves. So we'll go knight c2 or bishop to b7. And here we go. Wow, okay, so everybody says bishop to b7. No, no, 80%, 80%. So, okay, somebody said that this loses a pawn, and you're not wrong. We will lose our d7 pawn, but then we could probably infiltrate. And so, I'm think, I think that's probably a good trade-off. Yes, we lose the pawn, but then the rook gets really active. And I'm okay with that. So that's something to think about. One thing about the knight here in the corner is if we don't move it, it could get trapped. So for example, we play bishop b7. This bishop can come back here. And guess what? Now the knight is stuck. And we might actually lose it at some point in the future if bishop b2 happens. So that's just something to think about. Now I think it's fine because we're being aggressive here. But if we don't actually have a way to win that knight or something, it, the best move might just be to, to save the knight while we can. Okay, so I'm just letting you guys know that. But um, somebody said, yeah, somebody says bishop e4 saves it. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe probably bishop e4 and then we can bring it out or something. But that's just something in general you want to keep in mind. Your knights can get trapped pretty easily in the corner um, if your opponent, you know, wants to do that. All right, we'll go bishop b7. And king to g3. Okay, so Nelson gets out of the, the pin. What are we going to do now? Option one, save the knight. Option two, we bring the rook in to try to win the knight here since we have the pin with the bishop. Um, and then let's just say option three, we defend the pawn. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to say knight to c2. I'm going to say rook to e3 or rook to d8 are the options. Actually, I'll give you the option. We can trade the bishop for the knight. Bishop takes f3. Okay. Okay. So that's also an option. So option number one, number two, number three, number four, actually probably not in that order, but those are the, the moves. Okay. A lot of people are saying rook to e3 going for this, which looks like a very nice move. It does look like a very nice move. But remember, what do we have to look for before we look at the threat? Is it a blunder? If it's a blunder, we don't want to do it. Is this move a blunder? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So that was another trick. And uh, this is, I mean, this is what happens in games, right? You guys are looking and you're thinking and you're like, okay, let's see. Ooh, this is attacked. I can pin it. I can win the knight. Oh, the bishop, right? And so hopefully you're getting some practice with this. Always look out for the blunders. All right, so knight c2. Yeah, I think knight c2 is a good move. Okay, knight c2 it is. We save our knights, and we can actually start using it to do some stuff now. Nelson plays knight to c3. All right. What do we want to do? I'm going to let you guys give me the suggestions for this one. Any ideas? Somebody says knight to d4. Okay. So we'll do knight to d4 as an option. Knight to d4. Somebody else said bishop takes f3. Somebody else said knight to e3. Somebody else said rook to e4. Uh, e, wow. Uh, a, let's go a6. I saw a6. I'm seeing so many moves. All right. Votes are in. You got knight to d4. You got knight to e3. You have bishop takes f3 and you have a6. What would you like to play? Okay. It's pretty close, actually. Okay. Bishop takes f3 and a6 are the top moves. All right, let's talk about knight to d4. What's the problem with knight to d4? Yeah, it's a blunder. It's just a blunder. You got to look at those pieces. Let's talk about knight to e3. Knight to e3, I think, is a fine move because if the bishop takes it, you take it with the rook. I don't see any issues there, so you could go to e3. And then a6, 
just trying to get rid of the bishop maybe makes sense. The only thing about a6 is you are going to lose this pawn. And I'm not sure if we really want to do that. So, uh, all right. Bishop takes... Oh, I thought bishop takes f3 was winning. Now a6 is winning. Okay, it's close. Bishop... Oh, it's really close. It's really close. I'm going to just give it a second. If you guys haven't voted, vote, go ahead and vote. Because it's, it's like a tie. It's like a dead tie between these two moves. Really close. Wow. All right. 1% higher on Bishop takes F3. So this almost looks really nice because there's like this fork, but the knight's defending the bishop. You guys see that? So I don't know that it's actually that good. But if you just ask yourself the question, who's winning this game? These are equal. We have two rooks essentially for a knight. We're winning. Whenever you're winning, trading pieces is a good thing. So the fact that we can like force a bunch of trades is a really good thing. All right, so yeah, Bishop takes F3 is barely winning and I think that's the, a good move. Cause he's gonna take us and then we can follow up with something. Knight to D4, trade some more pieces. Um, or we could bring the Rook in and get a fork. What do you guys think? Let's do a quick pull. Rook to E3 check for the fork or knight to d4 check for the other fork. Which one do we want to do? Option one, option two. Hey, you guys are getting, you guys are getting smart. You're learning my tricks. Yeah, it's a blunder. It's a blunder, absolutely. So knight to d4 is the move. Let's go knight to d4. All right, so he moves. And what would we like to do? What do we like to do here? Probably trading is good, right? So I think this game is getting pretty easy. So I'm going to move it along here. I'm going to make this move for us and get to a more interesting moment. Yeah, maybe like right here. So what do we want to do now? We traded that. We're definitely winning, but how do we finish off the game? What should our plan be? I'm gonna give you guys like some general ideas here. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some moves. A6, Rook E1, Rook E4, and yeah, Rook E2, how about that? Yes. So we can attack the Knight, or we can bring our Rook to one of these three squares. What do you guys want to do? Okay, rook to e2 is winning. Yes, and so we talked about it earlier. Rooks on the second rank usually are pretty good. You can see that it has lots of targets over there. Also, check on the king, so white can't do something else. And uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. So yeah, rook to e2. Okay, king to f1. Now, what do we want to do? Do we want to move this guy somewhere? Like h2 to go pawn hunting. Maybe attack the bishop. Maybe just defend it. Or maybe try to activate our bishop somehow. Let's say bishop c5. Those are going to be your choices. And here we go. Rook to h2. Rook to c2. Rook a to e8. Or bishop to c5. Okay. So most people are saying rook a to e8, but quite a few people are saying rook to c2. Yeah, this is also a good move. Attacks the bishop. He could still move it here, but then the pawn is undefended and we can continue gobbling up pawns. I think that makes total sense as well. Rook h2 is not a bad move either, but that's pretty easy to deal with. Maybe like h5. And then we, don't, we probably don't want to leave this rook in the corner. So I like this. I think if I was playing a game, I'd probably play this too. So I like that. All right, so we'll go here. And uh, I wanna do a poll here. Um, do you wanna continue this game? Or have, uh, if I can type continue, 
or play against a new bot. I'll finish the game myself and we'll play against a new bot. Either we continue or new bot. Okay, here we go. Resign? No, we're not gonna resign. All right, new bot looks, nope, continue new bot. Continue new bot, new bot, okay. Most people are saying we're ready for a new bot. All right, so let me finish out the game and just to speed it along and then we'll pick a new bot to beat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I could go for this check and take this, but then my rook's hanging and so it just seems like the simplest thing just, just to take the knight. We have this next move. Uh, I think I will do it just to get rid of the bishop. And then now we can probably just checkmate with the rooks, some kind of ladder mate if we want. Or I could hunt the pawns and get a queen. Either way, um, let's just go here. Let's come down with this rook. Let's come over with this rook. And now that I've got him on the back rank, I'm going to just try to do a ladder mate. So I'll come over here. The threat is to come down here. And I don't want to lose my rook, right? So I have to take here. Still the same threat. And he's stopping that. So what do I need to do? Come to the other side. And now he can't stop it. The king is not that fast. Okay. So Nelson beats Nelson. Nelson beats Nelson. All right. So we're going to play a new bot. And I'm going to let you guys vote for which one we're going to play. So we have, uh, let me see if I can put this so you guys can see it. We have the beginner bots, intermediate bots. So Nelson was an intermediate bot. So I think that's a pretty good range. Could, now let's, we could try and let me do this. We could try an advanced or we could do another intermediate bot, but choose a different person. So I'm going to do a poll here. Oh, I have to end this poll End that one. Do a new poll. I'm seeing Antonio, Katsparov, Wally, um, Mr. Beast. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys Antonio. Somebody said Katsparov. Mittens? No, I don't want to play mittens. You really want to play mittens again? Mittens. What else? Let me see another name. Martin or Okay. All right. All right, guys. I'm gonna. Let, I'm just gonna let you vote. I'm gonna give you the options, and you you vote. Choose carefully. Okay. Choose carefully. All right. We've got four options. And oh yeah yeah. Let me put their ratings. That's a good question. Let me put their ratings. So somebody said. Antonio, who's Antonio? Where's Antonio at? I don't actually remember. Is Antonio over here? Oh, Antonio is 1500. Um, Kasparov is uh, 1400. Okay. Martin, well, 250, I think we know that by now. And Mittens is rated one, which actually means like 1 million. Okay. Ready? I'm actually really interested to see who's gonna win this. Oh, it's it's close between Antonio, Cats, Brav, and Mittens. Okay. You guys want to vote? It's I'm gonna let it go for a little bit. It's close. It's really close. All right, one more minute. If you haven't voted, go ahead. Viewers versus chess vibes. I didn't give that as a choice. The problem with that is everybody uses stockfish, and I don't really want to play stockfish right now. That's the problem with that. Okay, it looks like Mittens is going to win, but Antonio is so close. I'm, I'm tempted to just choose Antonio anyway. <laughs> All right. I'm seeing if anybody puts a comment that makes me 
choose one or the other. It's not happening. All right, it looks like it looks like uh, Mittens is gonna win. So, oh, Antonio is 32 percent. All right, guys, I'm gonna do Antonio just because this stream is kind of a more instructive stream. So, and I think I, there's gonna be more like opportunities for that with the Antonio bot. Okay, so we're gonna do Antonio, and if we still have time after Antonio, we'll we'll do Mittens then. All right, how does that sound? Since we've already done mittens. Okay. Thank you for your input. Antonio it is. Let's go, Antonio. Choose. Let's be white. And here we go. All right, folks. Here we go. I'm going to go E4 or D4 are the options. Because those usually win one of those two. E4 or D4. All right, almost 70% E4. E4 it is. Okay, let's play something that maybe you guys are not as familiar with. So I'm gonna give you options of the King's Gambit, the Danish Gambit, or, let me think, let me think. Um, Bishop C4, the Bishop's opening, how about that? We'll do, we'll do those three choices, okay? F4, see if we can get out of our comfort zone a little bit here, because I know most people are gonna vote for Knight F3. I'm not gonna give you that choice. There you go. You got those three options. Okay. It's pretty close between all three of them. Wow. Bishop C4 is winning currently. King's Gambit was second and then D4. Okay. So like bishop c4 it is so the bishop's opening and by the way usually the point of this is not to go for checkmate that's not what we're doing um it just puts the bishop there creates some tactics along this diagonal and it sort of mixes up the move order from a lot of other openings which can confuse your opponents and lead to some different positions right like if you were to play knight to f3 and then bishop c4 it's very different than if you play it this way because your opponent has to account for the fact that you might not play knight f3 you might play something else right okay uh options are the gambit yourself gambit we can just defend our pawn with knight to c3 we could um i wonder if f4 is a move i don't actually know it looks like it could be some weird king's gambit thing where we allow this maybe and so we're gonna go this 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 or we play knight to f3 and uh, those are your choices here we go. D4, F4, Knight to C3, or Knight to F3. Okay, Knight C3 is winning. Knight to F3 and D4 coming in close second. All right, Knight C3 it is. So yeah, I think this is fine. I'm trying to th actually, hold on a second. He didn't do it, but if he were to take here, I don't know if this is a mistake or not. Some Here's the thing what I'm thinking. Sometimes when you play this setup, black will just take the pawn and when you take it, they play d5 and they fork your pieces. And it turns out to be like a good, you know, a good trade for black because they end up just getting all their pieces out and they get nice control of the center. And I can't remember if this is a, mis a case where it's a mistake or not. Maybe it's when the knights are already out that it's a mistake. It's, it's one of those tricky combinations where sometimes it's okay and sometimes it's not, and I can't remember. Anyway, keep that in mind. Th there is this idea of a fork okay all right man see you later it's five in the morning in mongolia yeah get some sleep 
get some sleep. Okay. Bishop takes f7, going for the quick attack on the king, luring the king out is one option. Knight to d5, bringing the knight into the center uh, is another option. d3, defending this pawn is another option. And what are you guys saying? Knight to f3, just developing the knight is another option. Okay, here we go. Bishop takes f7, knight to d5 d3 and knight to f3 all right oh wow more people than i thought were saying bishop takes f7 interesting yeah i don't think it's actually good i wanted to throw it out there it's probably not good enough because we don't have a follow-up it's going to take us at least a move to get the knight out, and then we can't even necessarily go there. Or he just brings the bishop out and moves back, and probably not good enough. All right, d3 it is. Yep, d3 is a solid move. We got our bishop out of the pawn chain. Now we're safe to do that and let this bishop out. Okay, we have a pin here. We can deal with that by playing king to f1. We can defend the knight. We can play f4, or we can play bishop to g5. Here we go. Most people are saying knight g to e2. Yeah, I think this is a great, great idea. I like it. I mean, we want a castle probably anyway. We can take back with the knight if we need to. You don't have to necessarily take back with a knight, but I do like it in this case because it keeps the grip on the d5 square in particular. And so... I think that's a good choice. I mean, if black wants to, they can play d5 anyway, because the knight's pinned, right? Um, but I think, yeah, I think 92 is good. All right. 92 it is. What's Antonio going to do? He plays d6. Okay. What should we do? Castle. Bishop to d2 to break the pin. a3 to chase away the bishop. Or bishop g5. How about that? b2 bishop g5 a3 or castles most people are saying castles yep i i agree I think it's totally fine. Gets out of the pin. King is safe. Uh, and we're ready to play f4 and, and attack on the f-file if we want. So, yeah. And one of the things, guys, like, some people are saying, you know, bishop d2 or bishop g5. The nice thing about castling is we can still play bishop d2 next move. Or we can still play bishop g5 next move. Or bishop e3. Like, whatever we want to do, it's still there. Whereas castling you really only have two choices you're either going to castle queen side you're going to castle king side and so sometimes it makes sense to play the move that you're pretty much going to play anyways and delay the other one because you'll have more information about what your opponent's going to do right so I, I agree castling looks good okay he plays bishop g4 so we can play f3 chase the bishop away um somebody said bishop to e3 okay we can go for the bishop g5 that we didn't play before pinning the knight or we can just ignore it and play like f4 
How's that sound? Do that. So we'll say f3, f4, bishop uh, g5, or bishop e3. song is this this is um let me see it's harris heller mm, can't see meteor binge meteor binge all right what did you guys vote f3 wins okay yeah so f3 i'll just point out you have to be careful because you're opening up this diagonal your king will be exposed to checks and whatnot but a lot of times in these openings where you play f3 or f4 like this the point is that you're just going to tuck your king in the corner, if that ever happens, and your king is fine sitting right there. Now, you have to be a little careful. Sometimes if the bishop is there and the knight comes in, you could get forked, right? Like this, if you imagine. Uh, but as long as we're aware of that, there are ways that we can prevent that. One of the easiest is queen to e1, controls that square, and you have the rook and the queen controlling it. And if that ever happens, let's just say, you can always just sacrifice your rook for the two pieces. And that's a good trade. Okay, you lose a rook, but you get a knight and a bishop. That You should be happy about that. All right, f3. Okay. So, um, there's tension here. We could trade. We could leave it. We could go back. We could just, you know, do something like this. We could continue with f4 now. We could play d4, we could play knight to d5, so many options. Let's see what you guys are thinking. So some people are saying to trade. Some people are saying to go back to b3 because we want to be able to recapture maybe with this pawn, okay. Some people are saying bishop g5. And then some people are saying knight to d5, okay. So I think, I think those are some good choices. Right, let's go with number one, number two, number three, and number four. And we'll see what you guys want to do. D5, D5, all right, vote is coming, Wow, super close. It's super close between all of them. Wow. Like 25% for everything. That's amazing. Yeah, and I think they're all, you know, reasonable moves. So that makes sense. Oh, yes. Bishop takes e3 is bishop takes e6. Thank you. You're right. Bishop takes e3 is actually bishop takes e6. Yes, yes, yes. You guys are correct. Sorry. Um... Okay, so now that my mistake is, is being clarified, everybody wants to take it. Yeah, so one thing I'll tell you guys, I used to always think that this was good because it's like, oh, doubled pawns, I'm gonna do it. Turns out it's not that simple because that pawn on e6 is actually really good at controlling these squares. So like we can't put our knight there anymore. And it opens up the rook when black castles and it also helps them play d5 easier. And so it is a trade-off. I'm just letting you know. Not that it's not a good move or we shouldn't play it. Um, but that's just something to think about. Okay. And same thing if we were to play this on, you know, against black and we take back. It's not all bad news for us. It opens up the rook and that kind of thing. Okay. But it looks like you guys are still wanting to take it. So let's go ahead and do that. Bishop takes e6. Yeah, black does have a, a strong center now. It's their central pawns. And so you have to watch out for d5 and things like that. Okay, what do we want to do? Bishop g5, maybe f4 to try to be aggressive over there. Maybe d4, maybe something else. Queen e1 or a3. What do you guys think? I'm seeing a3, I'm seeing d4. I'm seeing f4, bishop g5. Okay, how about those are the options? There you go. a3 bishop g5 d4 and f4 ready vote
Okay, it's close between a3 and bishop g5. Looks like a3 is winning. Okay. Yeah, so this is fine. Um, we, we were kind of trying to maybe get black to give up the bishop, so that's fine. He goes back with check, so this is what I was talking about. We have to be comfortable going into the corner. Um, and so, yeah, we could either block with d4 or we could go in the corner. Or we could block with the bishop. What do you guys think? Let me end this poll and do a new one. What do you guys think? King to h1, bishop to e3, or d4. Ah, somebody said or block with the rook. Yeah, we could block with the rook. That's true. We lose the exchange if we did that. Okay, 80, 87% king h1. Few people said bishop e3 and d4. So, for those of you who said bishop e3, what's the problem? What's the problem? Yeah. There's nothing defending it. Bishop's just going to take it. So we don't want to do that, right? What's the problem with d4? What's the problem with d4? Same thing, right? Let's count. We have one, two defenders, and black has one, two, three attackers. So we lose our pawn. So both of these moves are blunders. That's why we have to play king to h1. Okay. He plays a5. All right. So what are we going to do? I feel like this is a moment in the game when some people might not know what to do. Maybe they would play bishop g5 and then not know what to do. Um, what do you guys think? Bishop g5. Somebody said f4. Somebody said knight to b5, knight to a4. Okay. So let's... Let's add this as an option. I think that's a good choice to add. Let's go bishop g5. And let's go f4. And I'm going to give you another one, queen to e1. How does that sound? So, knight a4. Bishop g5. f4. And queen to e1. Okay, what's winning here? Bishop g5 is winning. F4 is a close second. And then we have knight a4 and queen e1. Okay. So I just want to point out a couple things. If we play knight to a4, the idea is good. We want to attack the bishop and get rid of that annoying bishop. The, the problem with this move that I'm seeing is that black will probably just go back. And then what is our knight doing over there? Like, it's, it's literally not doing anything. We're not going to go here. We're not going to go here. The only thing we can do is go back to where we came from. And it's then it's a wasted move. So that's the problem with knight to a4 that I, that I see. Now, if this pawn was back here, it'd be a different story. Because then black wouldn't be able to save the bishop. We could guarantee a trade. But in this case, our knight's just going to be stuck over there. Okay? Queen to e1. Why would we play a move like queen to e1? The point behind playing moves like this usually is to give the queen options along a diagonal that it didn't have options on. So as soon as we play queen to e1, all of a sudden, these moves become available to us. We can come over here and attack the king, or if, if black castles. They haven't castled yet, but that's kind of why you would want to do that. Also, it controls some of these dark squares in ways that it didn't from d1, okay? That being said, f4 and bishop g5, I think, are, are perfectly logical moves, and developing is, is a good thing. So let's Let's go bishop g5. That's what you guys voted. All right. What's Antonio going to do? He does castle. All right. So now that we know where his king is, we might could consider queen to e1 and coming over to h4. Or uh, maybe just f4 and then attacking that way. Or even just a, a simple move like queen to d2. Lining up with the bishop. And some people are saying knight to b5 so i'll i'll give that as an option too so we have one two three four okay so knight to b5 queen to e1 
queen to d2, and f4. All right, so it's close between queen to e1 and f4. So I'm gonna just point out something for you guys um, to be aware of. First of all, knight to b5, I don't really think it does too much. Now, maybe you could say that it clears the way for the pawn to c3 and d4, which is something. Um, but other than that, the knight's not doing much out there. So if that's if that's a good enough reason, then okay, maybe you could play that. Um, if you, we play f4, it does start to open up our rook. However, we also lose control of this g4 square. So we have to watch out for in the future, if that knight comes in, you remember what I told you guys earlier, there's potentially a fork. Not saying we shouldn't play it, I'm just saying that's something that we want to think about. Queen to e1 is nice in the sense that we don't even have to worry about that right now. And then we can swing over here to h4 if we want and, you know, line up this way. Queen d2 also, I think, makes a lot of sense just connecting the rooks. And uh, so, yeah, just stuff to, to think about. Okay, so the vote is queen to e1. All right, queen to e1 it is. Antonio plays d5. And now you can see that pawn earlier when we took the bishop, how it's really helping support his, his center. So usually when this happens, uh, very, very rarely will I ever take this, right? Because if we take that, we just make his pawns look so nice and pretty. And if he takes us, well, then he's got double isolated pawns, which are weak, right? So probably we just want to leave this tension here and not do anything is what I'm saying. Okay, so we could bring a rook over. We could play uh, queen h4, queen g3, f4. Any other moves you guys are saying? Yeah, okay, that's pretty much it. All right, let's do the poll. Okay, to d1, queen g3, queen h4, and f4. Wow, it's really, really close. Really close between queen g3, queen h4, and f4. Okay, it's tied. It is tied between f4 and queen g3. I'm gonna let you guys vote before I say anything else. Okay, 29% are saying F4. All right, wow, it's it's so close. It is so close, it keeps going back and forth. All right, it looks like F4 is winning. Nope, now Queen G3 is winning. Now F4 is winning. Okay, you haven't voted. Now queen g3 is winning. Oh my goodness. Which, what is it? What is it? What are we going to do, guys? Oh, queen g3 now. <laughs> All right. Okay, queen g3 is winning. All right. Yeah, so the only thing some people are saying is that four is risky because you do lose support of these squares. You have to watch out for the knight. You have to watch out for, you know, this pawn becomes weak. And so maybe it makes sense delaying. The other thing that I would say is, even if we open up this file, black also has their rook involved. And so it's probably just gonna lead to some trades along the F file. I'm not sure if it's as as beneficial as if black pawn was back here, right? So anyway, I think queen g3 is, is a fine move. So let's go queen g3 and pull. What's Antonio gonna do? He plays queen e8. And now you probably know what he's gonna do next, right? 
probably going to come over here. It's probably what he's setting up to do. Why else would you play queen to e8, right? Okay, what do we think? <clears throat> what do we think? Give me some ideas here, guys. Okay, I'm seeing your moves. I'm going to put in some moves that I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Here comes the pull. You have bishop takes f6, bishop h6, h4, and e takes d5. These are your moves. All right, bishop h6 is winning right now. Okay, guys, don't use stockfish, please. Um, if you're gonna be saying things that tell me that you're using stockfish, I'm gonna mute you from the chat. All right, so that's a warning for everybody. Okay, bishop h6 is winning. So yeah, this is a nice idea, but uh, we're gonna see prop we're gonna I'm gonna do it because that's what the vote is But we're gonna see there's a, an idea here. We'll see if Antonio plays it That you have to watch out for okay. He didn't play it If he would have played the move knight to h5, it's an interesting move because it attacks our queen And it defends the checkmate. Okay, and so this is a move that you want to consider now I think we could just move our queen up and keep the, the attack and then the game goes on and I don't actually know if that's good or not for us But it's it's something that we would have wanted to consider. He just decides to defend um, But yeah, just keep that in mind and now that you know that knight h5 might be a move that's coming in the future So I'm not sure what we're gonna do now because we don't want to lose our bishop um, So let's think think through that no, no, no. So knight h5 defends the, the g7 pawn. So everybody's saying that that's checkmate. That's not checkmate. The knight would just take it, right? That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. What moves are we going to play? Capture the free pawn. Checkmate the king. Bring this rook over. Or play F4. What do you think? <laughs> yes, it's not a free pawn. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I don't actually know which moves to give you guys. Somebody's saying just move the bishop back. Play F4. All right. Let's go F4. Let's go bring a rook over. And let's retreat the bishop. Since I don't think it's working out for us. Let's, let's do those as options. So rook a to e1, f4, bishop g5 again, or bishop to d2. Okay. Okay, F4 is winning. One thing that's nice about F4 now is that the queen is in line with our rook. So that's that's the good news. Um, I think we still have to be a little careful with this, but it looks like it's defended well enough. And so, yeah, I, I think F4 now makes more sense than before. So, yeah, I'm with you guys on that one, F4. What's Antonio going to do? He goes for the knight h5 now. Okay. And so now we have to kind of think through what's happening. So what do you guys think we should do? Capture here, creating the counterattack on the queen. Save our queen by moving it to f3. Um, move it to, let's just say, g4 or g5. Or some, that's something else. Let me let me give you those as the options. I think that's, that's good. So we'll say queen f3. Queen g4, queen g5, or 
e, uh, f takes e5. All right. Okay, so for everybody saying to capture the pawn, the problem is that when they take our queen, when Antonio takes our queen, it's with check, right? And we don't actually get a chance to even take his queen back. So that's a big mistake. Okay, so we can't do that. Queen to f3. The problem with queen to f3 is we don't keep the pin on this pawn, right? That's the only thing saving our bishop right now. So if we go here, Antonio's going to take this and say thank you very much. And we lose our bishop, right? So we kind of have to do one of these two moves. Which, now you can see why putting our bishop there maybe wasn't the greatest. Because it was an easy threat for Antonio to deal with. And now our bishop's kind of a liability to us. We have to keep our queen here. And it's just sort of messing us up, right? So, wow. Big toss up between these two moves. I'm going to let you guys vote for a few more minutes. I personally think one's better than the other, but I'm not going to tell you which one until after the vote. And actually, I could be wrong as I look at this. It's it's, it's kind of complicated. I could be wrong. Um, okay, most people are saying Queen G4. Okay, queen g4 is winning slightly, so we're gonna go with queen g4. Um, what I'm thinking, and I could be wrong, what I'm thinking is if I go to g5, my bishop is trapped. It has nowhere to go. So a simple move like king to h8, getting out of the pin, and guess what? Next move, black's gonna take my bishop. That's what I'm thinking. Now, could I make it complicated with g4 and maybe do something on black's knight maybe but i really don't like trapping my bishop so at least queen g4 if i need to i can retreat my bishop it can get away i'm not trapping it with my own queen okay um yeah so that's that's the idea bishop takes g7 and you take the knight so somebody is saying you take here and after the queen takes, you take the knight. That's a good idea, except black wouldn't do that. Black would take with the knight. And I'm not getting anything, right? I lose my bishop. So that's my concern. Um, yeah, for everybody saying queen takes h5, you're not going to be able to do it. Okay. So I think queen g4 is probably the, the best move. It. Um, but I could be wrong. But that's, that's just my thought process. All right. What's Antonio going to do? Brings the rook over. All right. So what are we thinking? Should we take here to create pressure on black's queen? Should we push? Should we do something else? Maybe bishop back? Or should we try to bring our knight over to g3? What do you guys think? Let's do a poll. F takes e5. F5. Knight to g3. Or bishop g5. Okay, ready and vote. All right. Lots of people are saying F takes E5. And uh, I'm going to do it because it's by far the top move. So we're going to learn through experience here. We're going to learn through experience what's, what's going to happen. F takes E5. What do we think? Oh. Oh. That's a back rank checkmate. That is a back rank checkmate, folks. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm just laughing at everybody who saw it and uh, okay well this is how you learn right like you know you think probably oh he's not gonna take me because it's defended and I'm gonna take his queen but you have to follow it out when the back rank is involved to make sure you don't get checkmated now some of you maybe thought oh well we have a knight we'll block with the knight but no you won't because there's a bishop here right and so it's it's over I guess yeah I mean I guess we could survive by playing knight to g1 and not get mated immediately but we're still losing both rooks we don't even have checkmate here the knight defends it and yeah it's basically over right so um lesson learned lesson learned Antonio is tricky. Got to watch out for the back rank mate. So, just to show, I'll take it. He's going to take it. We have to block. And we get checkmated by Antonio. The mittens time. <laughs> chat through for content yeah maybe so maybe so that might make a good video all right folks should we play mittens should we play mittens or should you do you want to play against me i'll give you the option you can play against me or you can play against mittens okay let's do a poll here we go mittens or nelsie hey owen if i read that correctly yeah hey owen thank you Appreciate that. What's going on? Mittens or Nelsie? Is it even going to be close or is it just going to be like... Oh, Nelsie, 82%. Wow, 68%. Nelsie it is. All right. So here's how this is going to work, guys. Here's how this is going to work. I don't want to play against Stockfish. I want to play against my subscribers. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. If I see you saying Stockfish says this, you're getting removed from the chat. All right? So please, just... You can say moves that you think are good. Just don't say, like, Stockfish says this. All right. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to do this. I guess I'll just go to an analysis board here, and, and we'll play that way. All right, I am going to, I'll be, I'll be white, I guess. Um, and you guys will vote. And uh, the way that I'm gonna get your moves is I'm just gonna kind of look through chat and see which ones I see, okay? So I'm gonna play E4, it is your move. What do you guys want to play? And actually, I need to turn off the analysis here. Let me turn off this so I don't cheat myself. Okay. Do you guys want to play with the eval bar? Yes or no? Uh, hold on before we do that. Eval bar. Yes or no? Okay. There's a, there's a poll for the eval bar, and then we'll look at the, the options there. Okay, everybody says yes. All right, so let me uh, let me see. How do I do this? I think what I will do is just go like this. This should do it. Okay. So let me get your poll out there. Thank you, guys. All right, I've seen E5, C6, D5, and C5. Yeah, that should cover the, the majority. E5, D5, C6, and C5. Okay, there you go. All right. And I beat my subscribers. That's the big question 
E5 it is. E5 wins. Okay. What do I want to play against you guys? I'm going to play knight f3. I'm going to play knight f3. What do you guys want to do? Throw some moves out there. Throw some moves out there. Okay, I'm seeing knight c6. I'm seeing... I'm not seeing much else besides knight c6. Yeah. All right. I'm going to I'm going to just I don't even need to do a poll for that. Everybody was saying knight c6. Okay. I'm going to play I'm going to play the Ponziani. See what you guys know about the Ponziani. I'm going to play c3. Can I flip the board? That's a good question. I guess it would help you guys if I flip the board. Then play backwards. All right, let's do a poll. If everybody wants it flipped, I'll flip it. You want the board flipped so you guys can see from your from your perspective? Does that help? Yes. All right. I will do it. So I'm just playing backwards, which is interesting, but uh, it should be fine. Okay. Moves that I am seeing are d5, knight f6, d6, and bishop c5. d5, d6, knight f6, and bishop c5 are what I'm seeing. Let me give you a poll. d5, d6. Bishop c5 and knight f6. Okay. Got four options. What do you guys want to do? Okay. Knight f6 is winning. D5 was a close second, but it looks like knight f6 is winning. Okay. Knight to f6 is going to win. All right, so you're going to play there. You know what I could do? I could just flip it back to this way when it's my turn, and I'll make my move, and I'll flip it for you guys. How does that sound? That way I don't have to think looking at it backwards. I'm going to play the move d4, and I'm going to flip it for you guys. It's your turn. What would you like to play? Three moves and you're already out of book. <laughs> That's the point. That's why you play the Ponziani, because people will, don't know what it's all about. All right. I'm seeing d5, d6. E takes d4. Knight takes e4. I'm seeing one, two, three, four. All right. So those are going to be your options. So d5, d6. Knight takes e4. Um, and E takes D4. Okay, ready? There you go. Okay. Knight takes E4 is winning. This one is winning by quite a bit. All right. I'm going to... Yeah, it's almost 50%. The next closest is 20. Okay. All right, I'm going to flip back, and I am going to think. Why did I give up that pawn? I believe the reason is this. Okay, your turn. What do you guys want to do? You tell me, and I'll add it to the poll. As a reminder, we're not using Stockfish. I'm not playing Stockfish. I'm playing you guys. Eval Bar doesn't like my position, by the way. Okay, I'm seeing knight to e7, knight to b8, bishop to c5, and knight to a5. Pretty sure that covers it. 
One, two, three, four. Okay, let me do the poll. Knight to b8, knight to e7, knight to a5. And guys, I'm doing these in no particular order. I'm just doing them as I think of them, okay? So I don't think I'm trying to, like, sway you one way or the other. I'm just, yeah. All right. What are you guys thinking? Okay, seems to be pretty close. Oh, it's really close. It's really close between 97 and Bishop C5. You guys better vote. You guys better vote if you have an opinion on this. It's really close. Wow. 40-40. 40-40. This is exciting. I'm I'm curious what's going to win. King E7. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to have to give it a minute. It's so close. I'm going to have to wait a minute. You guys need to vote. If you haven't voted, now's your chance. Your vote means a lot, right, at this moment in time. Okay. Looks like... I guess Bishop C5 is winning now. I was going to say 97. Now I'm saying Bishop C5. Okay. One more... One more... No, actually, like 30 more seconds. Nope. Bishop C5 is winning. Okay. People are saying that they lose a knight. Yes, you will probably lose a knight. That's true. But, uh, that's the vote. Alright, Bishop C5 it is. Let me flip the board. I mean, I gotta take it, right? I don't think there's any other moves here for me, to be honest with you. Alright, I'm taking it. I'm taking the bait. Did you guys set a trap for me? What's the follow-up? What's the follow-up? I'm gonna give you... I'm gonna give you these choices, because I know it's gonna be one of these moves, okay? I'm just gonna give you give you those. And you can figure out which one you wanna do. Knight takes f2. Bishop takes f2 check. D takes c6. Or B takes c6. Ready? One, two, three, four. Okay, it's a no-brainer. Knight takes f2 is winning by a mile. Okay, knight takes f2 it is. So you're going for the fork. Uh oh. Did you guys see the eval bar? Did you see that? Did you see it? Uh oh. Alright, what am I gonna do now? What am I going to do now? I think. I think I wanna play this move. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna go Queen d5. Okay, Eva Bar didn't like it totally. Did I play the wrong move? Maybe I did. All right, y'all's turn. What are you gonna do? What are you guys gonna do now? Yeah, this is chat versus Nelson. That's what's happening. Chat versus Nelson. Chat is playing as black. If you're if you're just hopping in here. Okay, Knight takes H one. Oh my goodness. So many moves. Okay, hold on, hold on. Knight takes h1, I saw. d6. Okay. B takes c6. Okay. And... Castles? Is that the next common one? Castles, yeah. Okay. I guess it's these four. That's what I'm seeing. Alright, folks. Here's your... Oh, knight takes h1, uh, d6, um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's good. B takes c6 and castles, okay. Those are the ones that I saw the most of, 
So I'm gonna do that. Okay, poll is incoming. You guys are voting for black. You just joined what's going on. So it's chat versus me. You guys are playing as black. I'm playing as white. You have to vote on the moves. And everybody's saying knight takes h1. d6 is pretty close second. But it looks like knight takes h1. Okay. Knight takes h1 it is. Uh-oh. Eval bar did not like that. Okay, what is the move here? Uh, I don't actually know. I don't actually know. There's there's actually a lot of moves here. Okay. Um, I'm thinking it's got to be one of these two moves. Which one am I going to play? Which one? Uh, hmm. I think I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna play Queen takes c5. All right. Your turn, folks. Your turn. How long is the stream? Uh, I'm gonna stop after this game. So I'm gonna finish out this game and then I'll we'll stop. Okay, let's do a poll. D6. I've seen d6. I've seen b takes c6. Uh, d takes c6. Okay. Anything, any other moves that I didn't say yet that you want to play? You can't castle. That's right. You cannot castle. Okay. That's all I'm, I'm really seeing. B6. Okay, we'll put B6 on there too. Okay, so these are your options. D6, B6, or you take it this way or this way. Okay, so they're all pawn moves over here. And here you go. Your turn to vote. Resign, castle, offer a draw. <laughs> Queen h4, yeah, I could have put queen h4, but you don't want to play queen h4. I don't think that was going to be a top vote, so. Okay, d6 is winning by a lot, by a landslide. It's winning by a landslide, that's the, that's the term that I learned earlier in the stream. It's winning by a landslide. Okay, d6 it is. So you guys played d6, uh-oh, whoa, whoa question is why is the eval bar jumping to six I have an idea they have an idea of why it might be I'm gonna take wait a second let me just make sure I'm gonna take this all right, it's your turn. We'll probably analyze this game quickly afterwards since I think there's quite a bit of confusion about this position. It's a tricky line, it's, it's definitely a tricky line. I studied this like a long time ago. Okay, Bishop takes B7, resign. Any other moves? Yeah, there's not a lot of choices. Okay. Bishop takes b7 or resign. For draw. <laughs> okay. And oh yeah, of course. Taking the queen should be an option. What am I saying? Of course that should be an option. D takes c5. Okay, you've got bishop takes b7. You've got take the queen. Resign or offer a draw. Alright.
A lot of people would like to offer a draw. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to accept a draw in a position where I can see the eval bar telling me I'm winning 6.7. Just, just saying. I mean, you could try it, but uh, I don't think your chances are very good. Okay. Bishop takes b7 is, is winning. Okay. Yeah, it's probably the best move at this point. But the position is not good, I think. All right. Bishop takes b7 is winning. Here we go. Let's go back to my point of view. I think I see a fork. I don't think there's any other moves that I would want to play. Maybe that, but that's probably not as good as this. So I'll go queen b5 check. All right, it's your your turn, folks. Oh, he's Rodriguez. You're going to give me money if I accept the draw? See, now that's a different story. That's a different story. I didn't realize that. I might be convinced to take the draw. Might be. C6, king e7. C6, king e7. Draw, the match is fixed. <laughs> Oh my. Okay, queen d7. Let's go c6. Queen d7. Who says money can't solve problems? <laughs> King e7. All right, we'll do the resign draw pull in just a second. I'll let you do like one or two more moves here. You've got c6, queen d7, or, or king e7 for your options here. All right, c6 is winning. c6 is winning, okay. c6 is played. I'm gonna flip it and... Yeah, I'm gonna take the bishop. All right, folks, let's see. Hold on. Okay, here are your choices. <laughs> you can you can either analyze the game. We can analyze the game. You can offer a draw, you can resign. And then we analyze the game, so those are kind of the same actually. Or you can offer a draw with a bribe. Okay, it's close between analyze the game and offer a draw with a bribe. Flip the table, oh yeah. Flip the table. That's a good option actually. It's a good option. Okay, almost almost got the offer to draw with a bribe, but not quite. Flip the table. <laughs> That's the 6.6 .6 advantage and you want to flip the table okay okay let's do a revote let's do a revote hold on analyze the game or switch sides those are your options ready go Hey, if you want to bribe, feel free. I'm not. I'm not going to stop anyone from throwing out the super chats. Go ahead. Okay, you want to switch sides? All right. I have a few more minutes, so we'll do it. We'll just have to go quickly. <laughs> All right, let's switch sides and just. Uh, should I? Do I have time to do this? Let me see. Okay, we'll switch sides, but I'm going to go quickly. I'll just tell you that. I'm going to go quickly, all right? We'll switch sides, but I'm going to go quickly. Okay, so I just played this, and now that we're switching sides, it's my turn to play again from this position. So I'm going to castle, and it's your your turn. You guys are white now, okay? You're white. What are you going to do? Throw out some moves. Throw out some moves. 
Yep, YouTube is beating a, a, a national master now. You got it. <laughs> I see bishop g5, knight g5. Okay, bishop g5, knight g5, queen takes c6. And that's pretty much what I see. Knight a3. Okay, ready, go. Queen takes e6, knight g5, bishop g5, knight a3. Seventy-five votes, one hundred and fifteen votes. Okay, definitely queen takes c six is winning by a landslide. Queen takes c six. It is. I'm gonna flip the board. What am I going to do? What's the material like? Knight, knight. I have three pieces. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right. Wow, wow, wow. I'm gonna play e4. Your turn, folks. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Can't wait to see the eval bar drop. Well, I'm gonna try to be tricky. I'm gonna try to mix it up here. Okay, I see knight g5. I see knight h... Did I see knight h4? See knight to d4. Bishop to g5. King to d2? Really? Is that a real move? Queen takes e4. Yep, okay. Alright. So you've got knight to g5, knight to d4, bishop to g5, and queen takes e4. Those are the, the options. Ready? All right, what's the vote? Queen takes e4 is winning. <laughs> Queen takes e4, I'm ending the poll. I'm ending the poll right here. I'm ending it before it switched over to something else. Queen takes e4, I saw it, it was the top vote, barely. Whew. All right. I may have cheated a little bit, but I did let you guys flip the board, so I, I'm not gonna complain about that. Alright, I'm gonna go rookie eight. <laughs> and back to you guys. Good luck. <laughs> no, I didn't fix the vote. I just ended the vote early. I, you guys could have voted for any any other move. I just ended it early. That's all I did. Hey, at least now we got an even game. We have an even game now. Relatively even. Okay. Queen takes e8, bishop g5, king to d2, and knight to e5. All right. Queen takes e8. I saw bishop to g5. Bishop g5, knight to e5 was one. And I'm seeing Queen E2, I guess. I think these are the moves that you guys are saying. Hey, Malik, thank you. Appreciate it. Love the content. Keep up the good work. Awesome. Thank you, man. So, Queen takes E8, Bishop G5, Knight E5, and Queen E2 are what I'm seeing. Okay, here we go. That was the bribe for the draw. <laughs> Oh man, this is too much fun. All right. The poll is out there. Queen takes e8 is winning. Bishop g5, knight e5 are behind. Hey, you know what, guys? I'm actually glad that this happened. I'm actually really glad that that happened. You know why? Because that tells me you're not cheating. You're not cheating and using stockfish. So th thank you for that. Seriously. This is this is so much more fun than if I just got blown off the board, right? Okay. So everybody said uh, queen takes e8. Okay. Queen takes e8. Let's flip the board. And 
I don't have to think about this one. I'm gonna take the queen. Your move, what do you guys want? Oh, I didn't end the, the poll, sorry. <laughs> My bad. All right, new poll. What do we want? Bishop to e2, I see. Bishop to e2, what else you want? Knight to e5. <laughs> no other moves besides bishop to e2. That's the only move you want to play. Okay, bishop to e2 it is. That was easy enough. I don't even have to do a poll for that. What am I going to do? That's the question. Now that we have an even game here with the queen against three pieces. Hmm. Well, I guess I will... No, I don't want to go there. Chris, thank you. Thanks for joining, my friend. Okay, I'm going to go queen e7. I don't actually know what to do, so I'm just going to play that. Ooh, engine doesn't like that move. Engine doesn't like that move. What do you guys want to do? What do you guys want to do? Okay, people are saying it, so I'm just going to say offer draw. It's an option. You don't have to, but it's an option. You can offer a draw. I saw bishop g5. I saw king f1. Okay, and knight to d2. Okay. And if you're saying knight to d2, which knight? Knight b to d2, probably? You're probably saying knight b to d2. I'm going to say knight b to d2. And then king to f1, somebody said. Okay. So you got off for a draw. You've got bishop g5, knight b to d2, or king to f1. Ready? Go. Okay, it's pretty close. It's been bouncing around between offer a draw and bishop g5. 282 votes. If you haven't voted, now's the time. Do you want to play bishop g5 or do you want to offer a draw? Looks like bishop g5 is winning. Yep, okay. Bishop g5 it is. Okay. Huh. Ha ha ha. I guess I'm going to play f6. Well, let's see. Yeah, I'll play f6. All right, your your turn, folks. Rage quit. <laughs> Offer another draw. Bishop. Let's see. Any move suggestions? Bishop f4. There's one. Bishop f4. Bishop h4. Okay, there's some moves. And bishop d2. All right. How about that? And I'll, I'll give you a chance if you want to offer another draw. So you can offer a draw or you can move the bishop to h4. You can move it to f4. Keep in mind, there's three bishop options and one offer draw option. So if you vote for offer draw, it might win. All right, there's the poll. Oh wow. Big time off for draw is 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 winning. Okay. Um well, you know what guys? I think I need to go, so I'll probably I probably I probably will actually accept your draw. I'll take your draw. Although I think let's see the, the next move was bishop f4. I think I had a good move here. So just to give you an idea, I was going to bring this rook over here. See if the engine likes that. Yeah. And it's it looks like it's getting pretty tough for you guys to hold on. I think you have to play knight to d4. And then I was probably going to maybe bring my queen in. And there's a lot of threats. It's pretty dangerous. So I'll accept your draw, though. I do have to go. So thank you, guys. This was fun. Um, really quickly, let's just show what uh, what was going on in this position. So, knight takes e4 is definitely one of the, the lines. And then bishop c5 is definitely one of the main lines. And here, 
it's it's kind of this is why it's tricky because a lot of people think it's a it's a really nice fork it turns out after queen d5 it's actually not so simple because your bishop's under attack and even if you get the rook if you end up losing the bishop in the knight it's not really good so this a lot of times it's pretty favorable for white and so i think you are supposed to take here with check because it forces me to do something awkward i can't castle i gotta block my bishop and then i think you actually just go back and now you're threatening to go there right and i don't actually remember what the line is here computer saying queen d5 and it's it's super complicated i remember that from a while back so that's what should have happened once you take here you got to be really accurate and if you take the rook you're just in trouble as we saw um i just take the bishop the knight's trapped i'm gonna get that later and you still have to be careful with what you do here and you guys saw that as well when you fell for this little trick right so good games um You'd love a full video on this opening. Yeah, I should I could probably do a video on the Ponziani sometime. It's a really interesting opening. There's a lot of cool lines. So I might I might do that. Um no man, I wish we could play again. I gotta go though. Uh, I gotta get ready for, for dinner and, and help out with the kids. But uh thank you guys. And you can thank who was it? Who was it that, that did the bribe? Let me check his name. Where's it at? It doesn't show me the super chat anymore. Who was that? I'm trying to find it. I can't find it anymore. Anyway, whoever gave the uh, the super chat, thank you. That was the, the bribe that I needed to accept the draw. See you guys next time. And um, yeah. Malik, yes, thank you, Rob. It was Malik, thank you, Malik, for the bribe. <laughs> I don't have a streaming schedule right now, but hopefully soon I'm gonna try to Lock it in certain days and times. Um, I'm working on that with, with my wife and the family. So, yes, it's coming soon. All right. All right, Chris, take it easy. Thanks for the, thanks for, for joining, whatever they're calling it on YouTube, joining as a member, I guess. All right, guys, see ya.